So in this video, we talk about the meaning of the span of a set of vectors. And let's say now you're given n vectors. Let's call them v1 to vn. And the span of s is a collection of infinitely many vectors. Each vector is actually the linear combination of the set of vectors inside the set s. And the concept of linear combination was explained in the last video. And now you see we allow the constant to be any number, basically. So it means that this span actually contains many, many vectors, right? Because the constant is allowed to change randomly. And um, let's look at some examples now. And the first example, let's look at xy plane, which is a two-dimensional space. And you're given only one vector v1, right? And uh, let's say now the set S contains only one vector. So please look at the meaning of the span S. Basically, by definition, the span of just one vector is actually very simple because in that case, uh, it only contains basically all the vectors which looks like any constant times the given vector v1, right? And um, let me write it down here. So please explain what does it mean. You see, because now this constant is random, it can be any constant. And if you look at the xy plane, Right, and um, let's put the vector v1 inside. The x is 2, y is 3, so we get a vector like this. And um, now, you see, um, if you multiply this vector by the scalar multiplication, uh, no matter which scalar you multiply to, the fact is that the new vector here still lies on the same line as the lines that is uh, dictated by the direction of the vector v1, right? So let me put it down in a more careful way. So what does it mean? If you look at the graph, if you understand what I'm saying, basically, if you look at this straight line, which has the same direction as the direction of the vector v1, um, it just means that the span of s actually is exactly the same as the straight line given here. Let me put it here. See, basically, uh, that's the meaning of the span in exactly one straight line. And let's look at more examples now. So let's look at the current case. You're given two vectors on the xy plane. Can you tell me the span of these two vectors? So by definition, that's the definition of the span S now. But I think this case is very obvious. Why? Because if you look at the direction of these two vectors, the v1 is actually the unit vector on the x-axis. And the v2 is actually the unit vector on the y-axis, right? And um, I think we understand that for any vector on the xy plane, it can be written as the linear combination of these two vectors quite easily, right? So you see, um, this special case is quite obvious because of the fact that v1 and v2 are the obvious vectors, right? And it means what? It means no matter which vector I'm giving you. For example, I give you the vector like 7, 8. We understand that automatically it is a linear combination of the two vectors given. It means that uh, basically our span S cover all the vectors on the R2. It's basically any vector. Because any vector can be written as a linear combination very easily. It means the span S is exactly the same as the whole plane, right? So that's the answer to our current example. And let's look at more examples now. And let's look at the current example. You're given two vectors again. And let's look at the span of the two vectors here. If you do a quick observation, you may have noticed that v2 actually lies on the same line as the direction dictated by the first vector v1. So let me write it down here. Because v2 is basically the same as 3 times v1, right? So it means what? It means, for example, if that's the v1 you have on the xy plane, uh, v2 is basically on the same line, same direction, but the length is three times longer, right? So um, let's think about this problem. Let's see uh, all the linear combinations of these two vectors together. So let's say now um, we have a vector on the xy plane, which is a linear combination of the two vectors here. It essentially means such a vector is in a span S. And let's see um, whether the span S can cover the whole plane. And let's check it together. We can solve the system by comparing the x and the y coordinate. So I can write it down here. So basically, same as the last video, uh, we understand that to solve for the constant c1, c2 is basically the same as solving certain linear system, right? And let me write down the linear system like this. And I hope you can 
notice something if you use the gaussian elimination by the row two we can update the row two by row two minus two times row one in that case um the two coefficients on the left hand side for the row two is zero and for the right hand side it's going to be y minus two x right so what does it mean in this system uh, the key fact is both are zeros and it means that this system cannot have exactly one solution anyway so um you see this system is still consistent, which means uh, there exist infinitely many solutions if this one is zero. So let me write it down here. So you see, let's say if this one is zero, we understand the system has infinitely many solutions because if it is zero, we are getting something like uh, totally zero rows. It means in that case, we are left with one equation and two unknowns. And in that case, it gives us uh, infinitely many solutions. So it means yes, for certain x, y, as long as the x, y satisfy this equation, y equal y minus 2x equals 0, um, there are actually solutions c1, c2. It means these are the vectors that are the linear combinations of the vectors v1, v2, right? Let me write it down here. See, but this condition is quite restricted because there are so many vectors which are not on the same direction as this line. And we'll make the following observation if y minus 2x is not zero. So I'm talking about the right-hand side of this matrix system. And in that case, we are looking at the system like this. So we are having something like this. Uh, which obviously make no sense because the second equation means you are arriving at zero equals something non-zero, which is nonsense. So it means uh, basically the system is not compatible in the sense that there's no solution at all. And no solution C1, C2 basically means x, y as a vector cannot be written as a linear combination of v1, v2. So you see this fact basically means um, the vector is not in the span of the set S, right? And um, please make the, the final conclusion based on this. It means the answer is um, the span S, of course, now is not the same as the whole plane because um, there are some points this one cannot cover. The fact is that uh, the span S actually contain the vectors lying on the same uh, strict line S, as y minus 2x equals 0. And that's the answer for the span S. And um, let's look at some more examples now. So please look at this current example. And um, if I ask you for the span S, like this, what is the span S? The fact is that uh, the span S are basically all the vectors that are written as the linear combination like this. And um, as you have seen for quite many examples before, if a vector satisfies such an equation, it means there exist solution C1, C2. And we can make the x coordinate on the left and the right side equal, and the same thing can be done for the right hand side and the left hand side for the y coordinates. And in that case, we are arriving at a linear system, right? And for such a linear system, we can write the uh, matrix form like this. And of course, we can proceed for the Gaussian elimination, but you see the fact is that if there exists the solution C1, C2 for the system, it basically means um, the determinant of this must be non-zero, right? Uh, that's the property of determinant. So let me write it down here. This fact is actually equivalent. Uh, it means that we just have to check the determinant. As long as the determinant is non-zero, uh, there exists the solution C1, C2. So uh, the determinant is easy to check. For a two by two matrix, you can take a look at this. And obviously it is non-zero. It means um, the fact is that um, we don't care about the exact values of x, y. The fact is that for this system, in general, statically, uh, the solutions must exist regardless of the values of x, y. It means that um, we understand that um, basically the given two vectors v1 and v2 span the whole plane. Let me write it down here. So in that case, because uh, any vector is a linear combination of the two given vectors, it basically means the span actually is spanning the whole plane, right? And um, I hope this example gives you some hints here. Um, you see, because um, I think this exercise is actually relatively simple in the sense that you are always arriving at a linear system when you're trying to solve an equation like this. And because we understand the property of determinant quite well by now, if you check the determinant of the coefficient matrix, if um, the coefficient matrix has non-zero determinant, we automatically understand that the system is solvable and there's exactly one solution for C1, C2. 
and it means that any vector is actually the linear combination of the two vectors given. So I think um, it means basically, theoretically, you just need to know the determinant of the coefficient matrix of this linear system, right? And let me write a note here. So for example, uh, if I give you three vectors in R2, whether the span of the three vectors actually cover the whole plane. Can you see how to answer this problem based on the use of determinants? You see the fact is that um, out of the three vectors, if any two vectors actually span the whole plane, then basically we are done, right? Uh, the third vector is basically unnecessary if two out of three vectors actually span the plane. And, and we understand from the last example that in that case, we just need to check the determinant of the chosen two vectors. So let me put it here. To see if a vector is actually a linear combination of these two vectors, uh, the fact is that um, it comes down to solving this linear system. And as I said, this linear system, regardless of the values of x, y, it must have solutions as long as the determinant is um, non-zero, right? So um, if you find a determinant, I think it's quite obvious it is 3, which is non-zero. It gives you a sense that x and y values are not necessary um, as long as this system is always solvable, right? based on the determinant of the coefficient matrix. And in this case, it means what? And it basically means the span of the first vector and the third vector is actually the whole plane. And I think uh, if you add one more vector, it doesn't change anything. Because uh, theoretically, adding one more vector um, for the span, this set is at least as big as this set, uh, which is the span of V1 and V3, right? And because this one is already the whole plane, so it basically means this one is a equality sign, and which means um, the answer, R2, I'm sorry, R2 here. So uh, basically the answer is yes to this problem. And that's the end to this video.